Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today we're going to be talking about Unix and this is very exciting because Unix is the basis of a bunch of stuff either Docker, uh, Kubernetes uh, because Kubernetes uses Docker, CI because it doesn't matter if you are setting up your CI on a YAML file or on a UI that CI is actually running those commands on a Unix so everything you need to do related to DevOps, related to infrastructure, and even coding some of the stuff that you need to do, you need to have Unix basis, right? You don't have to know everything. You don't need to be a system admin, but then you need to have some knowledge. So this is what we're going to cover. And we're going to start with the basics, right? So let's talk about shell scripting, right? So uh, First of all, I do have here a uh, Z shell, right? This the one that this one that you, you are looking here is a Z shell script, which has the same as Bash script and some extra function. Had the same features of Bash and in some extra functions. So talking about what is shell script, right? So shell script is a computer program designed to run by the Unix shell. Right, and there are very dialects, very languages for that. Right, so you have corn shell, which is K S H. You have bash, which is the default in I believe almost any Linux, uh, and you have Z shell, which is Z S H. Right. Uh, if I if I do barra bin barra, you have. A bunch of shells here. I have uh, by default on my computer has the binaries for bash, csh, dash, ksh, sh, tsh, zsh. So, and I did install any of those. Those already came with Mac. So we have a bunch of shell already there available for you. If I do csh, it's going to open a csh terminal. If I do KSH is going to open a KSH terminal. If I do TSSH, it's going to open that terminal, right? So uh, you have access on your computer to all of those uh, terminals, right? All of those shells. Right? The most basic is bash. So this is what we I'm going to be talking about, right? So let's start with some basic commands, right? So the most basic commands, let me talk with PWD, which is where I am. Right. So let me let me create a folder here. So let's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to decide which folder I would like to go, and I'm going to create a folder called uh, Unix Basics. Right. So I created a folder with the command mkd Unix Basics. Right. So. Uh, the Unix has a manual command, right? So any command that you want to do in Unix, you can you can check the menu. Of course, you can check online, but the Unix has a command for a menu for you, which is called man, right? Man for menu, and I can, if I type mkd, it's going to open the menu for uh, for that command, and it's going to have a description and have all the options that you can do, right? You can do dash p, you can do dash v. Right, so I'm going to go over uh, some of those. Right, so I created a folder called uh, Unix Basic. So I'm going to go that folder. I'm going to enter that folder. So I'm going to say cd Unix Basics. If I do pwd, I'm already there on the Unix Basics folder. Right, so I'm going to create another folder. Right, so let's say mkdir. So this time I'm going, to, I'm going to use the command dash v. And I'm going to say tutorial. And now this time the dash V is for variables. It's going to tell me that it was created. When I created here, nothing, no, nothing was said. So if I uh, if I do man mkd again, V for variables is going to say whether it was created or not. The next one is dash P. Dash P is going to create all uh, intermediary folder that you that you might might need. So let's say if I do mkd and I'd like to create various folder. So let's say uh, exercise dash 
exercise 01. It's not going to create because there is no exercise, right? But now if I execute the same command, I just I just hit the upper arrow to show the previous command that I executed. Dash P X uh, oh my god, exercise. So now I can list everything. So now I have the exercise. And if I go into exercise with CD, I can also list the exercise zero on as a folder. Right? So the D here show this is a folder. I'm going to talk about the LS command uh, in the next video. Right, but ls is for listing. I just list it. So the dash p is going to create not only the folder that you want, but any any folder in between. I wanted to create the exercise zero one, but there was no exercise, so it created the exercise. Right. So one thing that you need to get used to is to the tab command. Right, tab is going to complete whatever uh, whatever you can complete, either a folder or whenever you have a, a full terminal setup, either uh, even a command that you, you are executing. So when I do cd access xz, I just need to type the initial and I type tab, it's going to fill in everything for me. I need to get used to this because it's going to make my life really easier. Right, awesome, awesome. So I now navigate into Unix basics exercise, exercise 01. Awesome. All right. So what if I want to get out of that, that this folder here, I can do CD dot dot and it's going to get out of that last folder. All right. So now I'm on the folder exercise. All right. I can get out of multiple folder. I can do CD dash uh, dot dot slash dot dot and it's going to get out of two folders. So now I am on the QA ops. Right, and now here's the beauty of the tab. Right, so since I, I I have the Unix, I can do UN and type tab. Now I can type E and tab, and E again and tab, and I already navigate into all of those. So now I'm already here. Right. I can also navigate into I can this is the the dot dot called escape. I can escape one folder and go into another one. So I can do dash uh, dot dot slash and I can do uh, what was the name again uh, tutorial no I need to escape one more tutorial so now I escape two and I'm on the tutorial so I escape I, I got out of, I got out of the exercise one the exercise and I got into tutorial and now I am on Unix basic tutorial right and there is one command that I can um, go back into a previous folder that I was, which is cd minus dash, right? cd dash, and now I'm back on that same folder that I was, right? If I do cd dash again, it's it's like hitting hitting the back button. I can, I, I'm going to be going back and forth, back and forth. Awesome. So that's navigating, right? And it, that's what you're going to do uh, a lot of, of the times. Uh, when you learn about alias, you're going to be doing less navigating, but then uh, you need to get used to, to this because once you go into a computer that's not yours, you won't have a all of your alias. Like if you log into a server, you log into a Docker machine, you're not going to be losing time creating alias there because every time you, 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 you have a new Docker machine, it's going to be a brand new machine so there is there is no 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 much sense in every time uh, setting it up unless you are logging to the same server over and over and over again then you can set up some alias there awesome so now we talk about uh, the menu we talk about uh, cd so if i do main cd i have the a bunch of stuff related to cd right i we talk about uh, navigating escaping Right, so let's talk now. Let's talk about uh, deleting something. Right, first, in order to delete something, we need to create. 
So I'm on my tutorial folder here, and now I'm going to create some a file. So what I'm going to do is tutorial one. So if I list ls, I have a file called here tutorial one. So I want to delete that file, right? For me to delete, it's called rm, and I do tutorial and the name of the file, and the file was deleted. So if I list, the file is not there anymore, right? That's great. Now I can delete a folder as well. So let me get out of this folder, cd dot dot, pwd. So I have the, if I do ls, I have exercise and I have tutorial, right? So if I do rm exercise, it's not going to let me delete it because it's a directory, right? I need to say I would like to delete this directory and any other subsequent directory there is. So there is a command called dash "-r". If I do man rm, you're going to see that dash "-r", is attempt to remove the file hierarchy rooted in each file argument, right? So it's going to do a recursion. It's going to delete that folder and that folder beneath, uh, underneath it, a subfolder and the subfolder and the subfolder. Right, so if I do rm dash r exercise, I do don't have exercise anymore. If I go back to uh, exercise, there is also a command called force, which attempt to remove the file without prompting for confirmation. Right, so let's say that you you know for sure you want to delete that, but you don't want to keep saying yes, yes, yes for any any confirmation. You just do dash f, and it's going to delete forcing without a confirmation. Just be sure that you know what you're doing when you use that command. That's great. So we learn how to create a file, create a folder, delete a file, right? Delete a folder. So let me create another file where we are. We are in the, let me go into the tutorial, touch tutorial 01. I also would like to show you how you can uh, create content in that file, right? I can, there is a command called echo, which is a print. Right. I can print something into that terminal. I can I can uh, into this terminal. So let's print Rafa, hello world. This is very basic for any programming language. So it printed hello world. Awesome, right? Uh, we have also I can print a variable, the home variable, which is a variable that sh uh, uh, talks about my shows my home home folder, which is user slash rafael.lima, right? So I can print a string, I can print, print a variable, I can print one if I want to, right? So it's, echo is going to print anything for you. But I can print something into a folder. I can redirect something to a file, right? I can print something to a file. So we have a file called tutorial01. This, I'm going to do ls for listing dash l in, to go into a list structure and you're going to see that this is a file, right? If it was a folder, it would be a d here. I'm going to, into, I'm going to go into details later on. But now I can say echo hello world and I can use the redirection command, which is the greater than key, and the file that I want, tutorial, right? So if I now list what the content of the file, there is a new command for you, which is cat. Cat is for listing. So now I, I, I listed the content of hello world, right? If I open this on code, you're going to see that the tutorial has the content hello world. This is the content of the file that my cat prints to the terminal. So I don't have to actually open anything. If I want to do a quick search, uh, I just do cat. Right? Awesome. If I do another echo, and now I say hi again, and I use this command, the same greater than, and I do a cat, it's going just to say hi again. It does not concatenate, 
right? It's always going to override the content of the file. So if you use that, you can, and you can use, you're going to show this uh, later, uh, more advanced use, but you can redirect the content of a log to a file. You can redirect everything on your terminal to a file. So, but then if I do greater than one greater than sign is going to override that file as I just showed. If I do again, echo, my name is Rafael. If I open code here, my name is Rafael. There isn't anything else. All right, but I can concatenate, I can append, not concatenate, sorry, I can append one line beneath another if I use two greater than signs. All right, so now if I do now hello world and I open Visual Studio Code, you're going to see now hello world, it's there. If I do say hi again, Hi again, it's also here. So the one greater than sign is going to override and two greater than signs is going to uh, append. I can also create a new files with this, right? So if I say echo new file and redirect to a file, if I do list, I have that file here. And if I print that file, it's new file. So when I redirect, doesn't matter which command I use, uh, it's going to create a new file, right? So I can say now new file append, and I use the double one, and I say new file, is going to create a new file with the content of that new file, new file append, right? So you can create the command using touch, you can create a command use a, a redirection, which is a single, uh, single or double uh, greater than signs. That's, that's amazing, right? What we, we already learned, and you can do a bunch of this stuff uh, when you are interacting with your Unix server, right? Awesome. So now, another command that I'm, I'm going to show you to you is the history command. So, let me clean this up. When I do history, it's going to show all the history of the commands that I just executed. So see, we already executed 200 commands, right? And you can see all of the, these commands here. You can, if you, if you don't remember, or if you want to see what you executed yesterday or whatever in a few minutes uh, ago, you can use the history and you can, uh, check what command you did, but then the history can get pretty big, right? Huge. So you don't want to be going through over 200 commands to find one specific command. So there is another command that is very important for you, which is the grep command. The grep command is a filter command. It's going to filter anything that you, that you have on your terminal. So this is very important because we, we're going to learn how we can concatenate multiple commands, right? So I can say history, and I can use the command, the, the pipe sign, which is this vertical, uh, vertical bar. And now, anything that I type now is going to uh, be executed on the result of the history. So it's going to execute the history, it's going to get all the, all the results of the history command, and I can do something extra now. Now I can do grep, and I can say, I would like to grep for echo, right? So this is the command I executed, and it found out of 200, it found these commands that I typed echo, right? I can do, cat and it's going to find all the commands that I did with cat. So see, I typed history, it got all the history, all the commands that it found on history and the pipe made me able to execute another command with that result. 
but then it's a little hard for you to see because everything is just black and white right so I can do uh, grab cat dash dash color and it's now it's going to actually show what it found right so anything that I put here I can do now change to echo is going to put some coloring on whatever command it was able to filter out which helps me uh, visually to see it right that's awesome but now another use of grep is I can actually cat the content of a file we have tutorial right this is the content of tutorial I can cat the tutorial and I can use also something with that return right so the first command is it's, a, it's going to generate some result and I can do a pipe and I can do a grab again and I can say grab Raphael and it found Raphael let me do dash dash color it found Raphael right I can do a cat also on multiple on, on a string right of course and now I need to put a string and say name is it found name is right so you and you would find any 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 other commands that I that I that I did right so let's say my name is Rafael Lima so if I do cat grab Rafael now we found two lines Rafael Lima so now the grab can be used on history the grab can be used in any command that generates a result on the terminal anything that prints I can use a grab so if I do echo my name is Rafael Lima I can do pipe grab Lima dash dash color and it's going to filter also that line anything that prints on the terminal the grab the grab can filter out and that's huge you can do a lot you can even do that on a variable you can you can print the variable and grab on the content of that variable which is amazing and that's going to be very helpful for us in the future right the grab command can also be executed by itself right I don't have to always use uh, the cat so if I have a file I can do grab and the content that I'm trying to grab so I can grab Raphael and I give the name of the file tutorial one and it found to Raphael right I'm not sure if I can do grab dash dash color here I can right so the grab is also a command on itself if I give the command the name the command the string that I'm looking for in the file the grab is also going to work. Right? I can use the command by itself, or I can use on a on a on a on a printing. I can use a cat. I can use a history. I can use anything. I can use on a log. So if I have a log, I can do a grab on the log for a specific thing that I'm looking. It can be an error message. It can be a label. It can be on a, a a bunch of stuff that I can do. So also, it's very important to know how to move and copy files. Right? So we have a tutorial one here which uh, we created uh, if we say here it's it's the content that we just created and I would like to copy this I'm going to manipulate this file and I would like to have a, a, a version of it so I can say CP for copy I give the file that I want to copy and I give the name of the file that the new file that I'm going to create so I'm going to give it tutorial copy tutorial zero one so now if I list I have the copy and the tutorial the copy is the same content right now I can say copy copy I also I don't have to put in the same folder I can I can escape I can copy to the previous folder so now I don't I only have that copy here so let me give another name make it easier so I don't have it here but if I list my previous folder 
I have the two ones that I created copy 01 and copy 02. Right. I also have a I can I can uh, rename right there is no command for renaming is actually MV for moving you you are you like you are moving the content of, to another file but it's actually a renaming if it's on the same folder right? so if I say copy tutorial this is the file that I want to move to rename and I can say copy tutorial new name if I list I have copy tutorial new name and the content is the same that we created I can also use the same move command to move right so if the folder is different it's going to move to another folder right? so if I say MV copy tutorial to the, uh, dot dot slash escaping is going to copy that tutorial to the previous folder which is the same folder that I'm on the Unix basic so it's on the QA ops one I have now I have here copy tutorial new name one last thing I can do uh, let's do the copy command copy tutorial one to copy tutorial I can do cop move copy tutorial slash slash uh, dot dot slash to escape the folder and give it a new name new name so now if I list it's here new name right if I there is no new name here I can do cat escape the folder and new name the content is here so this is how you can copy uh, move a file and rename a file Right. So this is basically what I want to show. All this command I'm going to make available on, on a repository, and I'm going to put on the on the video uh, on, on the on the description of this video the repository with a readme that you can you're going to have access to to all the commands that I just showed and, and what it does. All right. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. So next video we're going to be covering a little bit more. So we're going to be talking how we can copy and move files uh, and much more. Right? How we, go, we can list what it, we what are the this content of listing a file. How we can list the file for hidden files and how we can how we can have multiple uh, visualization of listing. Right. So thank you for watching, subscribe have it if you haven't done so, and give the thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you.